And let me now yield to the Ranking Member of the Ways and Means Committee, Mr. Levin, for his opening statement. Thank you very much. Uh, I think you notice this is the first time I have been in this room. There are TV sets here. I want you to know that they have been, I think, turned off. Uh, I notice that uh, Fox News, CNN, and ASPN is on these sets. I am not so sure why. I, I, I missed the baseball game last night, uh, but I think we have turned it off. Um, Yours isn't off. <laughs> no. <laughs> I, I pushed it and it says, U.S. House guest, no new messages. Um, as as you, you mentioned, uh, Mr. Camp, this is the first time since 1940 that there has been this kind of combined meeting on tax issues. And as we know, it is uh, scheduled and we will discuss certain aspects of the current tax law relating to debt and equity. But let me make this comment that I deeply feel. Because of the uniquely serious challenge facing this nation, action on the debt limit, Today it would seem most appropriate if we were gathering to discuss this challenge. The issue, the debt limit, is squarely within the jurisdiction of our two committees. That does not mean that the specific topic before us is unimportant. Indeed, if we are to seriously address tax reform, issues relating to debt and equity must be considered and, like other significant issues, done so in depth and with open debate. As our witnesses' prepared testimony very much demonstrates, the subject is complex and answers do not always automatically fall into usual ideological frameworks. But I fear the chances of the discussion at this joint hearing leading to fruitful action have been dimmed immeasurably by the environment created on the overarching action on the debt ceiling. Yesterday, Senator McConnell said, and I quote, after years of discussions and months of negotiations, I have little question that as long as this President is in the Oval Office, a real solution is probably unattainable, end of quotes. In my judgment, this approach politicizes and can poison the well for tax reform in the near future. It also flies in the face of basic facts. President Obama inherited a debt that had risen under President Bush from $5.7 trillion to $10 trillion, and he inherited a record $1.5 trillion deficit that had wiped out the record surplus inherited by President Bush. President Obama has said very clearly that we need a balanced framework to reduce the deficit now and in the future, while allowing for needed investments to promote economic growth and job creation. It is not helpful to walk away from the table. It is not helpful to insist on an ideological agenda that cannot become law. We should hear and review carefully the testimony now to be presented to us by our distinguished and if you have read uh, these uh, documents in advance, very knowledgeable witnesses. But my fear is that any insights that we gain in the process today will be washed away if the debt ceiling is not raised and we suffer the momentous consequences that would result from destroying the full faith and credit of the United States of America. Thank you, Mr. Chairman.